Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today we will be doing chapter 18, which is viruses and prokaryotes. So we'll start at 18.1, which is studying viruses and prokaryotes. So our key concept is infection can be caused in several ways. And just let me warn you that this chapter has a lot of specific details that we don't need to know. So basically just get the overall ideas and I'll tell you what's important to know. Viruses, bacteria, viroids, and prions can all cause infection. So any disease causing agent is called a pathogen. A virus is made of DNA or RNA and a protein coat. So this is an important thing to know, what a virus is. So a virus is some genetic information, which would be DNA or RNA, and then a protein coat. That's it. And we have to know it's non-living, so it's a non-living pathogen and it can infect many organisms as we know. A viroid is made only of single-stranded RNA and causes disease in plants. So a viroid is basically a virus in plants, but we don't even really know that. So it passes through seed or pollen. A prion is made only of proteins and it causes misfoldings of other proteins. And we don't need to know that either, but just if you hear the name, you might remember what it is. Results in diseases of the brain. So it still says 18.1, but this is 18.2, which is viral structure and reproduction. So viruses exist in various shapes and sizes. Viruses differ in shape and in ways of entering host cells. Viruses have a simple structure. So they have a genetic material, as we said, and a protein shell, which is called a cap capid, capsid, which we don't really need to know. So may be a lipid and there may be a lipid envelope a protecting outer layer so bacteriophages infect bacteria so this is our virus here we have the dna in base like the head kind of of it and then we have the outer layer of it is the protein sheet which is the cast it viruses enter cells in various ways so bacteriophages pierce host cells. So here we have a picture of our viruses here and they're invading the host cell, which is this orange thing. And they don't go into it, but they inject their DNA into the cell. And so this is another picture. So all these green things are the viruses and the yellowish orange thing is, or the brown is the cell. So viruses of eukaryotes enter by endocytosis. Viruses of eukaryotes also fuse with membranes. So here we have an image of the cell and we have the genetic material from the virus inside. Viruses cause two types of infections. A lytic infection causes the host cell to burst, so it basically just kills the cell. And this is a lytic infection. So here is the start. So we have our virus and our host bacterium, which is the cell or bacteria. The bacteriophage attaches and injects its DNA into a host bacterium. So here we have a virus and it's inject this blue sliver here is its DNA. So it's or the genetic material. It can be DNA or RNA. And so then we go to the next page, which is the viral DNA forms a circle. So the DNA inside forms a circle and the virus may enter the lysinogen cycle in which the host cell is not destroyed. So this is what happens if it's not destroyed. The viral DNA directs the host cell to produce a new viral part and the parts assemble its new bacteriophages. So basically, it tells the cell to produce more viruses. So this is one virus and it tells the cell to produce more viruses and at the end we get a bunch of viruses. So the host bacterium breaks apart or lysis and bacteriophages are able to infect new host cells. So now we have more viruses and we can infect more cells. And so that's basically what you need to know about viruses. A lysinogenic infection does not immediate, does no immediate harm. So the prophage may leave the host DNA and enter the lytic cycle. So here we have the viral DNA is called a prophage when it combines with the host cell's DNA. So the DNA injected into the cell combines with the host DNA. And although the prophage is not active, it replicates along with the host cell's DNA. So it kind of becomes part of its DNA. And when the cell duplicates, the DNA of the virus also duplicates. 
and many cell divisions produce a colony of bacterium infected with prophage. So this doesn't kill the cell, it just connects with it and produces more infected cells. So let's say these cells are infected with the virus. Now, when they reproduce, we produce more infected cells and it doesn't die. But in the other stage, this cell, it, the host cell dies and produces more viruses to go infect more things. And so in both ways, we're getting more viruses, but one, the cell dies and one, it doesn't. So this is 18.3, which is actually viral diseases. And so some viral diseases can be prevented with vaccines. So viruses cause many infectious diseases. There are many examples of viral infections. So we have com the common cold, we have influenza, we have SARS, SARS, and we have HIV, and the body has natural defenses against viruses as well. So vaccines are made from weakened pathogens. As we know, pathogens are anything that cause diseases or infections. A vaccine stimulates the body's own immune response. Vaccines prepare the immune system for a future attack. So basically, vaccines are a little simple form of this disease. And so a flu vaccine would be a little piece of the flu, a very weak piece of the flu. And so they inject it in somebody and the body fight, naturally fights against it. And since the thing is weak, so the flu is a very weak flu, the body can easily fight it and take over and win. And as it does this, it produces antibodies which help against future attacks. And so doing the vaccine, now we have more antibodies for the flu. So when the real flu comes, we have defense against it. So vaccines are the only way to control the spread of viral diseases. So this is 18.4, which is bacteria and archaea. So bacteria and archaea are both single-celled prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are widespread on Earth. Prokaryotes can be grouped by their need for oxygen. So this is another unimportant part of the PowerPoint. Obligated anaerobes are poisoned by oxygen. Obligated aerobes are need oxygen. So aerobes need oxygen and ana means it doesn't need oxygen. So the facultivated aerobes aerobes can live with or without oxygen. So yet again, that was unimportant. Bacteria and archaea are structurally similar but have different molecular characteristics. Bacteria commonly come in three forms, and these forms we don't need to know either. So we have the rod shape, called bacilli. We have spiral shape, which are called spirula or spirochetus. And we have spherical called cosi, and we do not need to know any of these. So we, as we know, they have many shapes. Bacteria and archaea have similar structures. They have plasmids, flagellum, and phili, phili. So we have the flagellum, which is basically a tail that helps the cell move around. And then we have phili, which are the little hair structures that come out of the cell membrane. And it's another way to help the cell move around. And then we have plasmid, which is basically the cytoplasm of the bacteria. Bacteria and archaea have molecular differences. The amount of peptoglycan within the cell wall can differ between bacteria. And this is another unimportant thing. So archaea have different lipid enter entirely. Gram standing identifies bacteria. Stains polymer, peptogen, grams positive, stains purple, more pepto. So we're basically talking about staining the cells so we can see certain things, but this is unimportant. So bacteria have various stages for survival, strategies for survival. Prokaryotes exchange genes during conjunction. So here we have prokaryotes and they have these little conjunction bridges and they basically just exchange genes between each other. Bacteria may survive by forming endospores and this is another thing we don't really need to know. So that's the end of chapter 18, which was all about cells, bacteria, and viruses. And so a lot of this was not that important, but just basically get the main ideas out of it.